Hey guys, welcome to another Vorslog Tech Tip video. Uh, this time we're going to talk about S197 and S550 Mustang brakes. Okay, so the S197 Mustang was made from 2005 to 2014. It is a solid axle car. It was sold in hundreds of thousands. The S550 is the 2015 and up. We've owned multiple versions of the S197 and now we own an S550. Uh, and we're learning some new challenges, so I thought I'd share what, we, what we've learned is some different weights and things of different factory brake components. So what we have here is the Brembo front four piston caliper that came as an upgrade on the 2011 to 2014 GT. It was on the 2012 and 13 Boss 302. It was even on the earlier GT500. This four piston caliper and this 14 inch rotor uh, were an upgrade to the 13.2 inch two piston sliding and an even smaller uh, 12 inch earlier version. Uh, they were pretty good. It was a nice improvement and the fact that Ford went with Brembo uh, kind of brought a little bit of um, notoriety to Ford and, and to the Mustang itself. And in the market they were trying to sell to, um, it, was a, it was a good move for Ford. And this upgrade works reasonably well and we sell a package that has these calipers, these rotors, and some pads and it's like $1,100, $1,200. It's pretty cost effective. Um, and it's, a, it's an easy bolt-on, you can do it in an afternoon. Uh, if you've got the 13 or 12 inch brakes on an S197, this is a nice upgrade. On our TT3 car we ran for five seasons, um, a big red, and I'll show a picture of that here. We ran that car really heavy to fit within the confines of a certain NASA uh, time trial class, TT3. We ran the car at 3,800 pounds with driver. Uh, so we ran the car basically at full street weight uh, plus, plus driver and some fuel load. We actually ran a little bit heavier than that sometimes and we overtaxed what this could do. This is a car with full aero, uh, 335 and 345 Hoosier uh, A7 race tires, uh, really high-end suspension. It was maxed out. Uh, and the one thing that, that held us back for several seasons were the brakes. We were going through uh, brake pads every two weekends. We'd go through rotors every three. Uh, twice a season we had to just throw these calipers away. It ended up being cheaper to just replace these than it would uh, cost us in shop time and materials to rebuild these. Uh, it'll burn up the seals, and I'll show a picture of that here, and the O-rings, um, and a lot of the wear items, the, the bleeders actually would start leaking. Uh, it, again, it's a decent caliper. It's just a bit undersized. It's, it's too lightweight for this car. Um, and the factory figured out on the 2013 and up GT500 to go to a big six piston caliper. It's not this particular one, but it was really similar. And, and like this uh, six piston caliper for the S550, you know, this is 14 and a half pounds, almost double the weight of this guy. Um, so, you know, with, with mass uh, comes a little bit more structure. You can run a physically much bigger pad. It's like 50% bigger than the pad that came in these. Um, and they went from a 14 inch rotor to a 15 inch rotor. Now the 14 inch rotor is nice and thick. It's an inch and quarter thick. Uh, it's about 24 and a half pounds. The 15 inch rotor from the S550 is massive. It's 30, 33 pounds. I mean, it's a, it's a big bastard. Uh, and it's real similar to the GT500, the, the late 15 inch kit that they made for the S197. I probably should have upgraded to that on our car. Again, 90% of the people in the S197, this is, this is good enough. Uh, we've since gone to a six piston, 350 millimeter two piece power brake kit and it, it blows all of this away and it's much, much lighter. This is uh, a six piston two piece and it weighs about the same as this four piston, but it's physically much bigger and you can see them side by side. It's, it's uh, a lot more stable, a lot better components. It's a motorsports caliper. Okay, so S197, there's a four piston from the factory. There's a six piston. It's really big and heavy, but it gives you more heat capacity. And then there's aftermarket options like this, stop tech, there's a few others. On the S550, the newer chassis, they weigh about the same. Our, our 2018 weighs 3645. Uh, it's within 10 pounds of what my 2011 weighed, uh, really close in weight. So they're still pretty heavy. They just have a lot more power now. They're rating the 2018 at 460 horsepower. They're really making about 30 more horsepower than that. So more power, as much or more weight. And so Ford upped the ante with this guy, which is, what is that, 12 pounds? 50% heavier than the four piston that came on the upgraded 
S197. And this is the base brakes on a GT or an EcoBoost. This is what they come with. So big four piston caliper, the same size rotor. It should work better than the S197, right? Wrong. This is terrible. Um, it looks pretty good. It's a, it's a nice casting. Um, it's still got you know the bolts that hold it together that gives it a little bit of strength at temperature. Um, I don't think that's the problem. The problem is in the rotor. So this is the 14 inch, again, inch and a quarter thick, base model S550 GT rotor. It's fully four pounds heavier than the 14 inch S197 rotor. And again, with weight comes a little bit of heat capacity, so it should be better. 50% heavier, bigger caliper, a heavier uh, rotor. But the one thing Ford really screwed up on, and I don't know who at Ford thought this was a good idea, but he's an idiot, is they do the brake cooling from the front, from the wheel side. There's no way to get air into here. There's no way to force air through the back of this because this is solid. There's, there's, no, there's nowhere for the air to go. On the back of any other normal rotor, the cooling is done from the back. And you can make a brake cooling kit, and we're going to make that for the S550 15-inch stuff. But for this, there's no way to cool this. It's hopeless. Our testing was not flattering for this system. In stock form on the teeny tiny 235 stock tires, our 2018 GT got eight laps before the brakes were gone. And I don't mean, oh, they started going away. I, I was driving off the track. The stock brake pads were gone. They came, they disappeared in eight laps on a, a brake friendly course, Motorsport Ranch Crescent. Um, we went back a week later had upgraded to brand new uh, G-Lock R8 pads on these gigantic four piston gallopers, but we couldn't do any brake cooling. They would last two laps um, on, on a, again, on a brake friendly track and I was having to brake early and easy on every corner or they would completely go away. This is with good pads. Our third track day in this car, same caliper, same rotors. We went to G-Lock R16 pads, their most aggressive pad, front and rear. And we went to a more brake intensive track, Eagles Canyon Raceway. I could get one hard lap in the car, one. And if I ever braked over more than one G, the next corner of the brakes were gone. And I drove off track. I, I'm not driving the car crazy. I've driven an S550 on these brakes and I could drive it all day on these brakes, one lap. In the short term, we're gonna take these and throw them into a large body of water. And we're gonna put these monstrosities on and this rotor and this caliper, 48 pounds a corner. But with a traditional cast rotor, this is what you have to do. You just have to go just insane, big diameter, big mass on, on the rotor, big mass on the caliper, big, big pad. And that's how you make this thing live. Uh, and that's a shame, uh, but it'll be a good test for us because the 15 inch S550 rotors are normal, I can cool them, so we'll have a brake backing plate. We'll put four inch hoses on the car, force some air through the rotor, it'll cool the hubs, um, and we'll use these for a few events to get some good test data. We'll run it at MSR Crescent and Eagles Canyon again, and I'll be surprised if we don't find at least two seconds uh, on a minute and a half course. That's how bad these 14 inch brakes are. They're terrible. Now, we'll be able to sell this package pretty cost effectively, $1,300, $1,400, uh, when from the factory, this upgrade over this is $4,000. Uh, it comes with a couple other little doodads, most of them end up in the trash anyway, but this is the big thing. The factory wheels are a little bit bigger, they're still too tiny, nine and nine and a half inch wide wheels. We go to an 11 inch wide wheel uh, on both the S197 and S550 because these cars are so big, they need as much tire as you can afford to fit under the car, which is a 305, 315. So we'll run the car again with these. Uh, and at some later point, we're going to go to this caliper, which weighs, you know, 50% less than this. Um, and the 380 millimeter, 34 wide, I mean, two piece rotor, and uh, we'll, we'll drop some weight. It won't be 48 pounds a corner like this, this mess is, but we're looking forward to this upgrade. And this is something that I wish I would have done on our S197. I mean, we raced it for five solid years and we fought the brakes the entire time. Um, if we got two weekends out of a set of pads, we were lucky. Uh, it, it, and it seems crazy, but as expensive as an aftermarket brake kit can be, 
uh, if you race a car and you run it pretty hard and you're hard on brakes, this system can pay for itself over a season or two with just consumable costs for rotors and pads and caliper replacements and rebuilds that you'll have to do periodically with these um, just because it's that much better. Now I think this will be a much better upgrade than the 14 inch stuff on the S550 and this may be good enough for, for most people. So we'll sell this kit for S550 and we might even sell the S197 version uh, of the 15 inch six piston stuff for these guys. But this is where I'm really excited about. There's, there's weight savings and, and the pads are thicker and everything lasts longer uh, with these. I have these on two of my other cars, uh, an FRS, which I'll show here, and an F E46. I've had the power brake four piston uh, kits on both of those cars for two years. Uh, the BMW we've raced dozens of times, usually with two drivers, NASA weekends, uh, and we're on the same set of pads on year two. You know, the two years of racing, they're still two-thirds pad depth, which is kind of crazy. Uh, I would never expect that on any of the OEM-based stuff. And we'll track pad wear. Uh, we'll, we'll see how thick they start with and how far we go. We'll, we'll put G-Lock pads on these as well. Um, and uh, we, you know, we'll, we'll see back to back. Does it, does it drop any lap time? That's the only change we're making from the last round of mods. We've done suspension, wheels, and tires. Now we're doing brakes and cooling. Uh, and I know we'll drop time. Um, and we may drop some more time once we go to this later this year. So you can read more about this in our S197 and S550 build threads, which are in our uh, project build gallery. I'll put the URL here, um, and you can check those out. Um, and uh, thanks for watching another Vorslog Tech Tip video. See you next time. Filthy, dirty things. Yeah.